fight natural gas. So uh, I will just very quickly introduce uh, the program of the day. Uh, as I mentioned, this event is organized uh, within the Bioeconomy pilot of the Vanguard Initiative. And in fact, the coordinator of the pilot, Ilaria Re from the Lombardy Green Chemistry Association, will briefly present the initiative to, to all of you. And then we'll have the pleasure to host a keynote speech by Maria Victoria Ortiz, Sales Manager, Varsila Biogas Solutions. This will be a very interesting perspective for all of us, which we are used to work on liquefied natural gas or liquefied biomethane for road transportation. And thanks to Maria Victoria, we'll have a perspective on the use of this fuel for uh, marine and in general water transportation. Then I will give the word to uh, Matteo Lorenzo De Campo for, from uh, the company uh, Gruppo Maganetti Spedizioni SPA in Italy, uh, who will present the SM Bio LNG business model, which has been developed by his company in cooperation with uh, other actors along the value chain, which has also been supported by the Bioeconomy Pilot in the access to the great service of the TAF, the Technical Assistance Facility. And as a consequence, we will close uh, the event with uh, a contribution by Anita Tregner Milinaritz, uh, TAF uh, TAF, Technical Assistance Facility Service Coordinator, who will explain the features of this service that can be accessed to. There will be uh, space for um, uh, questions, so I ask uh, all the attendees to feel free to post their questions in the chat. I will read the questions and I will uh, refer them to uh, the, speak the relevant speaker. I don't know if there will be time to address all your questions. Uh, uh, we will take note of your questions and possibly answer them uh, privately after the meeting if we don't have. Uh, time. Uh, some uh, uh, etiquette for this meeting. I would like to ask all the attendees to mute their microphone and turn off their video sharing. Panelists can share the, the, their videos and present their uh, slides. We have tested that already. I have to tell everybody that this webinar will be recorded. And as I said, you can ask questions in the chat. Slides, recording and questions and the contacts of the relevant people will be available on uh, the LGCA website, chimicaverdelombardia.it. You can see it there at the bottom of the slide. So without further ado, uh, I will give the word to the coordinator of the Bioeconomy Pilot of the Vanguard Initiative, Ilaria Re, who will introduce uh, the pilot to you. Ilaria, please. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ilaria Re. I am the project manager director at Consortial Biotech and project manager at the Lombardy uh, Green Chemistry Association. The webinar is promoted by the Bioeconomy Pilot of the Vanguard Initiative, technical coordinated by the Lombardy Green Chemistry Cluster on behalf of the Lombardy and Ransom region. I'm grateful for your participation and interest in the webinar focused on stimulating interaction among the expert investors, policymakers on the energy sector of biofuels and enhancing interregional cooperation. I would like to introduce briefly the Bioeconomy Pilot, its mission, and some relevant achievements obtained so far. Uh, funded in 2013, the Lombardy Green Chemistry Association is one of the regional cluster of the Lombardy region, which in 2015 recognized it as a point of reference of the local bioeconomy growth. The, cl the cluster brings together the leading academic and industrial players operating in the Lombardy bioway sector, and from 2016, it's all the technical uh, coordination of the bioeconomy pilot of the Vanguard Initiative. The Vanguard Initiative is an European association uh, driven by a political commitment of 35 uh, regions in, uh, in Europe to use their smart specialization strategy to boost new growth through a bottom-up industrial innovation in European priority areas, uh, in five priority areas. Um, 
in which uh, bioeconomy represents uh, a key uh, element of, for, uh, as a contributor for sustainable growth. In uh, this context, the bioeconomy pilot contributes on enhancing interregional cooperation among industries and academia to boost innovation on bio-based sector by supporting the market uptake of the most promising business models. Uh, co-led by the Lombardy and Rastad regions, the pilot brings together 18 regions interested in increasing the local impact of the bio-based sector, stimulating interregional business opportunity and attract public and private investment. Up to now, uh, four demo cases are belonging in the bioeconomy pilot, uh, that gathering 12 use cases, 18 regions involved, and mobilize more than 50 million of uh, investment in research and development, gathering more than 50 industries, universities, and RTOs. Uh, four main sectors are represented. Uh, the oldest one, the oldest demo case one, is focused on producing bioaromatics molecules. It aims at creating interregional value chains to produce lignin based aromatics molecules and innovative sustainable materials. Uh, fine chemicals building blocks starting from lignin cellulose uh, uh, residues to uh, based on biorefinery approach is the second uh, demo case. The third one uh, is a liquefied biomethane demo case, uh, focus on enhancing a wide diffusion of bioliquefying natural gas for sustainable transport and mobility, the subject of today. And finally, the latest demo case is a biopolymers demo case, focus on creating interregional value chains for sustainable bio-based materials and bioplastics. Um, what about uh, the benefit and advantages in joining the bioeconomy pilot? Uh, there is several benefits for regions and for companies uh, indeed. A region um, can identify sustainable business model linked to their smart specialization strategy uh, potentially replicated in their regions and also can uh, evaluate the opportunity to, to boost innovation in bio-based sector by using already existing partnership, alliance and demo facilities able to bring together all actors active in bio-based sector uh, operating in their uh, regions. And finally, can uh, bring experience exchange of ideas useful for um, the programs and regional strategies uh, updating. On the other hand, SMEs and large industry can also take benefits from joining the bioeconomy pilot. First of all, the bioeconomy pilot can help, can help SMEs and partnership on defining sustainable business model and setting up a uh, in um, a sustainable and a feasibility study towards the market exploitation of demo cases that have already achieved a good level of maturity. And this is the, the, exactly the case of uh, uh, the SM bio LNG uh, that today we were uh, talk about. And also uh, the, bio, the bioeconomy pilot can help companies in joining already existing partnership by providing their skills and expertise and also increase uh, their capacity to attract public and private funds. Uh, and finally, we would, be, we would like to uh, really demonstrate today that some specific business model born in a specific region can be successfully replicate and uh, in order to increase uh, the relevance and the impact of specific application around uh, the Vanga regions and more in general around Europe. Finally, what about the main highlights of 2020 of the bioeconomy pilot? Um, we are working on increasing the um, Part, the regions and also the company's participation in the most advanced partnership. 
as already mentioned, one of the most uh, advanced demo cases uh, that are currently belonging in the pilot is focused on production of bioaromatic molecule. In this context, the linear value pilot plant is already on the market. And now we are looking for companies interested in testing uh, and conduct application testing of this material to evaluate uh, properties and potential industrial replication for several uh, fine and bulk chemicals production. But also we believe that uh, a more sustainable value chain has been created across uh, uh, Europe by connecting all actors from primary producers to the industrial application. And uh, uh, for, for this reason, we are uh, defining sustainable value chain and uh, looking for new business model uh, based on uh, uh, gathering all actors across the value chains. Finally, uh, as mentioned before, the pilot can support companies on uh, attract more investment, public and, and private. And uh, for, for this reason, we are uh, operating on uh, design uh, new sustainable business model in order to increase uh, the capacity to, to gathering uh, uh, all actors together for a more sustainable growth. This is my last slides, and thank you very much for uh, the time. And uh, uh, I remain at your disposal for any question. And now I leave the floor to Maurizio. Yes, thank, thank you, you Ilaria. <clears throat> Thanks for the interesting presentation. Yes, uh, as a collaborator of Ilaria, I would like to stress to all the attendees that we are available as coordinators of the pilot to listen to your requests and explain what the pilot uh, can do uh, for you, whether you are a company or a research institution or a, a, an, an investor or an individual. So um, we are in good time, and it is now, in fact, uh, the, the moment for our keynote speech of the day. So it's my pleasure to give the word to Maria Victoria Ortiz, who I'm, whom I invite also to share screen. Maria Victoria is sales manager of Vertila Biogas Solutions, and she will tell us more about the activities of her company in the area of liquefied natural gas and liquefied biomethane. Thank you, Maria, for joining. The floor is yours. Thanks a lot, Mauricio. And uh, first of all, just control check. Everybody see the screen? I do see it very well. OK, good, perfect. So yes, as uh, Mauricio uh, mentioned, uh, I want to talk a little bit of bio LNG in not only in road transportation, but in shipping industry. Uh, Wait a second, uh, there is a problem. Yes, <laughs> i sorry, uh, there was a problem with the slides. Then uh, what we have seen lately is the definitely an increasing of awareness of biogas potential in the shipping uh, sector. We have a lot of, uh, as you can see in the screen, a lot of, for example, here our neighbors. Uh, yeah, it's important to mention that Varsila Gas Solution as an entity in Sweden, another in Norway, and we basically are focused in develop the biogas um, business. So, uh, from if we see from our neighbors, there are a lot of interest in Sweden, for example. Uh, uh, well, Sweden has been always be well known and some sort of reference when it comes to the biogas uh, sector. Then uh, it calls our attention, especially even right now in the second half of the year, uh, and regardless of uh, COVID-19, we have the number of RFQ that we have started receiving from the shipping industry is quite considerably. That obeys also at the main players, as for example, Shell says that, yeah, there is a huge interest in bio LNG for, that, uh, for the shipping industry as well. Uh, if we go for local, uh, the um, Hurtigruten is a cruise ship that is actually having now an off-taker agreement with one of our clients in the north of uh, Trondheim. Um, this plant is already there producing bio LNG and so far and uh, during the last three years they have been delivering to the road, uh, bio LNG to the road transportation. 
now it also enters into the uh, shipping industry. So we have a quite a quite an interesting uh, yeah period at the moment, I would say. So in order to understand the drivers, and um, basically the drivers are yes, we all want to make uh, the whole world more clean, right? So we have to tackle two things: uh, the emissions, which are divided into categories. Category one: local emissions. And when we talk about local uh, emissions, we talk about yeah mainly NOx, SOx, and particles. And uh, they are related to health and environment uh, yeah, issues or consequence. They have a short term impact and uh, they have a local effect. So hence local emissions. When we talk about local emissions, main focus is in carbon free uh, uh, fuel. Sorry. So basically mainly hydrogen and ammonia. Then we enter into category two, which is the greenhouse gases emission that we talk about mainly CO2 and methane. And then they contribute to global warming and climate change, and they have a long-term impact and a global effect. We talk here in the, under this category, uh, carbon neutral, uh, which are yeah, biogas and power 2x. So uh, we see in Varsila, we see the LNG as a key enabler towards the cleaner shipping. And why is that? Basically because we are going to cut local and um, greenhouse gases emission at the same time. They uh, it, uh, provide an infrastructure and a pathway for renewable fuels. And it is possible to take advantage already of the infrastructure that we have with LNG and just blend it with either bio LNG or with uh, synthetic uh, biomethane. So let's see, if we compare the zero carbon fuels versus the LNG, the main, or and that is why the Barcilla bets for the LNG and the bio LNG as, uh, as main fuel of the transition period. We have already, we know that we have the knowledge, we, we know how to operate under varying conditions, under abnormal situations. So therefore we see it as, uh, yeah, quite easy to enter into the LNG uh, or bio LNG uh, for transitional fuel. When it comes to hydrogen, we see some challenges there when it comes to operation, for example. And of course, uh, it implies uh, quite yeah, high capex. And ammonia on the other side, we see, okay, it is toxic, but the other side is not cryogenic fuel, which could be okay, all right, but, um, and can be bunkered without any remarkable boil of losses through its path. Important to mention, Varsila at the moment has, um, we are going to the to these two, the, the first one and the and the ammonia. As I said, bio LNG and LNG, we see it as transitional fuel. We have an important project or pilot project or, uh, or going on now at the moment in ammonia. But we see that definitely hydrogen would be perhaps the solution that perhaps is going to be the solution of the future, but it's going to, to, uh, to take a lot of time to get there. So talking about transitions, it's important to keep in mind that the transition from coal to HFO took us 30 years. And that is important to see things in perspective. I think that we see, we in Barcelona, we see things in the same way. It's going to take time to get there. It's going to take time to just to have everything or hydrogen in every chip, right? So therefore we have to, um, or we want to take, so to say, advantage of this period. And uh, yes, and provide with solutions for it by encourage the usage of bio LNG in the shipping industry. So as I said before, we are, or our technical solutions are tackling two main sectors. And is the heavy road transportation, which already we have uh, some references there, and then um, the shipping industry, which in this case, let's say that for heavy road transportation, we are talking most of the time about 100% bio LNG. 
when it comes to shipping, and we uh, we cannot escape from uh, realities of uh, science and uh, time, the thing is that you need a blend most, in most of the cases, because there is, well, few cases that manage to collect enough feedstock for having a large uh, bio LNG production plant. And when we talk about shipping, we talk about big volumes, whereas when we talk about road transportation, we talk about the smaller volumes, right? So the fuel gas quality measures. We have also in Barcelona, we deliver the dual fuel engine requirements, which have a heating value of more than 28 megajoules per kilogram and a methane number of uh, more than 70 or 80. This is by definition the requirements of the, of the engine as such. Then, and the LNG fuel storage of the requirements, the, the temperature which, yeah, our solutions have is uh, minus 160 to minus 180, depending on, of course, the pressure of the storage tank. Important to mention here, if we compare, for example, fossil LNG in comparison to bio LNG, you see that it's comparable when it comes to heating value, but the advantage of all the, the bio LNG, and that's what, yes, you can mix it and even improve the, the, the performance of your engine, is that the methane number in the bio LNG is close, to, if not 100, it's close to 100. And that is basically because of the composition of the bio LNG is purely methane. Whereas where we have in LNG, we have a mixture between nitrogen, methane, and ethane. So that is the, the main uh, difference between the two. I would like to talk a, bit, a bit about the, the change of the bio LNG production. So, First things first, the difference between biogas and biomethane. The biogas uh, has a composition between 50 and 60% of methane and a 40 to 50% of uh, CO2. It also contains traces of uh, H2S and impurities. The production of uh, the biogas is by anaerobic digestion and the usage is for heat and electricity on domestic use at, for upgrading for, tr for the transport fuel. When it comes to methane, methane has between 97 and 99, 99 sorry, um, methane content and between one or two percent of uh, CO2. The production of biomethane is by, uh, be, uh, by biogas upgrading and the usage for transport fuel, for supply to gas grid or for energy storage for base and peak loads. So this is a good schematic of uh, what we do uh, with our solutions. We take the feedstock, which could be energy crops, could be manure, could be organic waste or sewage. It enters into an aerobic digester. From the anaerobic digester, we have mainly two main products, the raw biogas and the biofertilizer, which by the way, uh, this product, the biofertilizer is actually quite in high demand, uh, at least here in Norway, uh, the farmers claim that it's actually quite a good quality biofertilizer. So if we follow the road of uh, the raw biogas, then we have um, here an upgrading facility, which can be also, I mean, internally, and I, I'm going to go to details in the next slide, but, um, our process of upgrading utilize heat, which can be integrated with the anaerobic digester. And then from one, uh, the, from one side, we have biomethane, which is completely clean. And we have bio uh, CO2, either to atmosphere, or we can also offer the possibility to have a CO2 liquefaction module here. Then that, that biomethane, which is yeah, basically clean, goes to or can potentially go to different end uh, users. Could be for biogas to gas grid. It could be the input of the processing, uh, cryogenic process for the bio LNG production, 
or it could be sent to compress, uh, compression station and then the CBG or compressed biogas. So biogas upgrading with Varsila Pure Gas CA. That is the name of uh, our modules of uh, upgrading. And we have, we come here with raw biogas. We eliminate the H2S with an um, activated carbon filter. Then at, at this point, we have clean gas without H2S which is gonna to come to a absor absorption column. And um, there with uh, amine, is all the, all the CO2 molecules are going to be trapped in the structure of the amine. So then here on top of that uh, column, we will have a gas that is already H2S free and CO2 free. And then finally we go for a gas compression and drying process to obtain biomethane. Important to mention here, yes, we cannot afford, for example, in a liquefaction process, we cannot afford to have any of those components. And the, that is the main reason why uh, Bartzilla has go through this project, uh, process, sorry, because it's the best match with our cryogenic process. Uh, the reason why we cannot afford to have those amount of contaminants is basically because we are talking about a cryogenic process. We don't want to have any corrosion. We don't have to have any, of course, any, any water because it would clog the whole system. So that is what the level is, uh, so to say, so strict. Then um, one thing that is important also to mention here is the stripping. Uh, this is a closed loop with, where amines goes, absorb all the molecules of CO2, and then those molecules that are trapping the amine are dissolved uh, in the stripping column. As I said, or as I mentioned previously, we use heat for going into that process of desorption and the, or the stripping, sorry. And that is what uh, we can potentially even recover. Let's say uh, in average 75, it could, uh, potentially we can be more uh, of heat recovery by heat integration with the anaerobic digestion. Then after that gas is clean, or this biomethane basically, uh, if we go for the road of bio LNG, of course, we uh, follow a, a cryogenic process. The first thing is that the clean gas is entering into a precooler. Um, this precooling system, it works with ammonia. And then important here is to keep the system entering to, to minus 10 degrees always. And uh, this loop is what we call internally the MR loop. MR make reference to mixed refrigerant, and that means uh, basically it's a, it's, a, it's a mix of um, hydrocarbons plus nitrogen. And important also to mention here, Varsila is quite simplistic in its approach uh, for, uh, for offering uh, the sort of technical solutions to the market. This work, the same, uh, <laughs> way that are, that are refrigerant in, uh, in your places. It's not more complicated than that. So then we have this, uh, yeah, on a standard, sort to say, um, refrigeration cycle, where we, at the end, we separate light uh, and uh, heavy components, which enter into a cryogenic heat exchangers, and the magic, of course. <laughs> so then we get uh, LNG, or bio-LNG in this case, to minus 162 degrees. And at this point and before the valve, we are working the whole circuit with 20 bar. Then we send to the storage tank and um, that is pretty much it the, in principle. And our solutions are all containerized and, uh, and we have to say uh, without any hesitation, it, is, it has the lowest OPEX in the market, at least in electric consumption. Then we have developed through the years standard solutions because of course it makes more economical sense. So we have in your left side, you can see the uh, standard solution for upgraders. 
and in the right, uh, yeah, the, the standard modules for liquefaction. In the in liquefaction, uh, the, yes, the, the first letters or the letters um, make reference to the type of process that we're using. In this case, from 6 to 25, we use MR, mixed refrigerant. And then the number make reference to the capacity that that module is able to produce of bioenergy per day. So in a MR6 would be a uh, yeah, mixed refrigerant, which produces six tons per day, okay? Same way, uh, SDV make reference to semi-dual Brighton. In these cases, these are like more like, as we said here, the hops are bigger plants, which makes more economical sense to go for another solution different to the MR uh, cycle. So in this case, we work just with a cycle of nitrogen. And then we have a standard capacities from 100 to 250 tons per day. Um, yes, this is a good example of a circular economy here, uh, working at the moment in, in Norway. This is a plant called Skon. It has a production uh, capacity of 25 tons per day um, bio LNG. Initially, their plan was to go for just the road transport, and uh, that has been the case so far. But um, recently, they got a, a new uptaker agreement with, uh, yeah, if you remember the, the ship that I, or the cruise that I show in the first slide, <laughs> that is a Hurtigruten um, cruise. And then they, they have an uptaker agreement with them. So they are going there, their ships are going to run in um, bio LNG as well. The important here to mention is the size of the plants are quite small. If you can see uh, to the right side, there is a the upgrading system. A little bit, tiny bit uh, left is the liquefaction. The upgrading system is no more than 20 times 30 meters and the liquefaction 12 by 20. The gas source well, is um, paper mill waste, which this plant is located, uh, yeah, really close to the paper mill. And uh, by boat, they bring um, fish waste. So they mix all the two together. Yes. So my main takeaway with this presentation is Yes, we know that we need to we, we, we need to fulfill right with all the requirements that now in Europe are so strict. So, but at the same time, we need to be clear into the fact that we have to go through certain transition. And I think that the that the bio LNG brings that that uh, possibility of yeah fulfill with all the uh, the green mandates. And at the same time, you have all the infrastructure already in place. So, yes, basically, my, my conclusion will set or yeah, encourage to the time to act is now. And um, I think biogas or bio LNG offers a good solution. To it. So, yes, that was it. So, um, thank you, know. Maria Victoria. Yes, thank you. Uh, I can see at the moment there, there, there has not been any question from the audience posted. I did have one and you answered with a nice uh, slide on the integrated uh, plant because my question was if you knew about examples of a fully integrated value chain. Mm. And while I was noting down the question, you showed the case of this <laughs> plant on shore. And uh, that, that is, I, I just saw instead of a question, I share a reflection uh, because uh, we should all think about this and others as a winning case of integration because new, there we can see that not only the biogas production is integrated with upgrade liquefaction and distribution, Mm -hmm. uh, but also uh, the whole thing is integrated with the upstream source of raw material, which is yeah. the paper mill. Correct. And then, uh, okay, and again, the, it, it has an additional advantage of being on shore, or on the shore, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, 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 which means that uh, transportation by boat 
of the of the other raw material is uh, is easy and um, what uh, my opinion is that this is what we should be looking for uh, mm -hmm. to make to leverage on all these possible advantages to make the realization of these integrated value chains possible and economically uh, feasible absolutely absolutely uh, so uh, thank you very much Maria Victoria I hope that we will be in contact in future to uh, to do some work for Vanguard together sure I hope I, I wait for that call <laughs> that's good and uh, so then we can uh, move on in the program and talking about integrated value chains and new bio LNG value chains uh, we uh, are all looking forward to listen to the presentation of Matteo Lorenzo de Campo, Maganetti Spedizioni. And uh, can I say, Matteo, his brainchild, his creation, uh, the, the bio SMB, uh, sorry, SM bio LNG uh, business model. Matteo, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Maurizio. <clears throat> Now oh, let me share my presentation. Okay. Did you see it? Yes? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, I thank you, our guests, to host me here. And thank you all to listen to me today. I'm Matteo Lorenzo de Campo, CEO of Maganetti Group. We are a made in site company settled in the northern part of Italy. And uh, for job we do industrial transport. Simply we ship goods with big trucks. Very easy, very clear. At some point of our history, we decided to apply to our main business strategy, the sustainable philosophy, making uh, it a point of no return for our business model. Uh, the first step we undergone uh, innovative certification, helping them to develop to the market as uh, sustainable logistics by a slog, uh, transport compliance rating, uh, and uh, we've set a new company standard, becoming a benefit company, such as a benefit in Italian, and uh, uh, becoming a certified B Corp. I'm very proud of this certification, but especially the last one, the B Corp one. Uh, B Corp is a movement that declare business as a positive force to create value to all the community we impact, and not only for a low number of people, usually already rich. But uh, here we are, we've done many things, but our biggest success will be uh, the production plant of Biofuel. In the next uh, 20 days, we start to produce around uh, 2,000 tons for here of uh, liquid biomethane, becoming probably the first transport company, road transport company, that intensively use bio based renewable fuel for our fleet and for third part vehicles. So, as the presentation before, uh, I've uh, told us uh, how biomethane is done, uh, all the process. Uh, in uh, our case, uh, this biomethane is done uh, from uh, animal waste and uh, agricultural waste. No first culture product will be used. Uh, just waste or rotational culture, not taking away any space for uh, food crops. That's what uh, uh, Italian law call advanced biomethane. So a biomethane done without taking away any uh, space for human or animal production. Uh, and that's a very big achievement for us. That's I think only 10 years ago was totally unthinkable. 35% of our uh, fleet will go on the road with uh, a renewal, biological uh, fuel built uh, 
publicly at zero, zero kilometer from here. And that's a very, very big achievement. And that, uh, and that fuel will uh, pump us to 47 million of kilometers. That's a very, very big number. Uh, yeah, uh, as we say, we are not simply in say heat, but we are certifying, certifying it. Uh, for us, without the certification, words are only words. So we're helping realize, uh, realizing uh, a attestation of the use of, of this biofuel. Uh, we believe this step will be done by a growing number of companies in the next year. Uh, and uh, ourselves are targeting uh, for a full 100% biofuel uh, fleet. So, uh, following this line, we are following two different parts. The first one is this one. Uh, so, provide for a complete traceability of the use of biofuel through specific certification that we call BioLNG certification. And we are developing it uh, with uh, two scientific partners that will help us. Uh, that's very important because uh, if someone do something good, it must be certified. And then he can sell it uh, to their clients and to the market. The second one, uh, and probably the most important one, is the dissemination of our project, of all its elements, so that it can be replicated and, we wish, improved by also other companies. Uh, our objective is not to be the first uh, and uh, lonely company to do that, uh, but to share our information with others and let our specific sector grow in a very sustainable way. This is why we are so proud of the work done with the European uh, TAF staff and uh, with Ital Biotech, because without them, uh, our project will be uh, condemned to be ours alone. Thanks to them instead, our project could become a milestone of many sustainable, sustainable projects and let uh, and let supply chain grow to a very sustainable finish line. So that's all uh, uh, I have to say. I thank you all uh, of you, and uh, especially Anita, Enrico, Ilaria, Martina, and Maurizio for the job you've done with us for the task. And for any question, you can have you can feel free to contact me in any moment now, obviously, but also later or in the next days. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Matteo. Your, your, thanks. Your presentations are always very inspiring for me. And I hope it has been the same for uh, many of the attendees. I do not see uh, questions, but I do have uh, two questions. And I start uh, with, with one. Uh, I am choosing it because I want to see how difficult I want to make it for you. Uh, <laughs> I make the most inspiring one. Why you have been first? Uh, we, we will be first uh, in Italy uh, and uh, probably only for some months, not for years, uh, because we are not uh, thinking anymore as a single company, but we are thinking as a supply, a really supply chain system. And uh, uh, we got uh, the right client, the right partner, the right idea, and we built first uh, a complete chain. That's the very difficult thing. Nobody can do this alone. You need to have a, 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 a complete chain that asks that. Uh, we've been working on that from since years, and today was the achievement of that. 
So we are first probably because uh, sustainability is not a strong, it was not a strong setting in our business uh, model, in our business space, in, in our sector. Uh, today, things are changing, but are changing. And we are, we have a very young uh, administration that instead uh, push it very, very far, very fast. Thank you for your answer. I think you, you uh, raised two very significant points, which I also agree very much with, which is the integration through the value chain, and uh, uh, which is important for economical sustainability of this uh, usage as a fuel, and uh, that uh, the premium you can have today, thanks to the environmental advantage, is, is different from the one that, that that people hoped for yesterday, but it wasn't there. Um, okay, so I have a question here in the q and I think we have time uh, if you can try to reply. I have a question that says, could you elaborate more about the business side of the project? That is, if it is still profitable or how you make it profitable? To me, uh, uh, at today, uh, we think it's profitable under some uh, uh, hypothesis. Uh, so our business plan will be public through TAF and uh, Ital Biotech. They've done this, especially this, to let it open. So uh, if you have uh, the right client, if you have the right uh, location where put your uh, uh, fuel station, you can make it uh, profitable. Yes. The number will be public in the next week, I think. Great. Thank you, Matteo. And thanks again for your uh, contribution. You have, during your presentation, you have also mentioned the TAF, Technical Assistance Facility. I'm glad to hear that you are satisfied and you are happy of the service. And I'm glad to know that, uh, in fact, we will hear about the Technical Assistance Facility right in the next presentation. I'm very happy to give the floor to Agnita tregnen Linaritz, a TAF Service Coordinator. So please, Anita, log in and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you again, Matteo. See you later. Thank you very much, Tom Marito. Thank you very much, Matteo. I hope you can hear me. Uh, let me also try to share my screen. Can I confirm it? that we can hear you and we can see your screen. Super. <laughs> Thank you so much also for inviting me to, uh, to uh, speak more about technical assistance facility for industrial modernization investment or how we call it short TAP. Uh, because uh, this is uh, the service uh, of the European Commission is the technical assistance uh, that three of us partners that are listed here are delivering on behalf of the European Commission. Uh, and it's very good to hear uh, that we have already satisfied the beneficiaries because, of course, this is the main goal and the main point uh, of the service. Uh, we started in January 2019. Uh, so this is a three-year project. Uh, and the idea of it is to support uh, the project, uh, as uh, Matteo has explained, so those uh, that are on the ASTRI platform for industrial modernization, uh, so there are a lot of partnerships over there uh, who put their expression of interest uh, in order to uh, create together with the, the other partner regions um, uh, the investment projects they're having in mind under a specific thematic area. Uh, as you know, also the commission is very much looking now into of course, you know, the ground component is, is always very much present, uh, but also the commission really wants to foster more and more uh, investment projects uh, uh, popping out and, you know, coming to see the light of the day. 
Uh, also, we've been discussing yesterday the instruments that are going to support them. Uh, so it, it is very important then also to have a technical assistance that will help uh, the regions working together into developing the investment projects because usually you know we are more into uh, into a European uh, type of you know grant projects than the investment one. Uh, so for that reason, the Commission put in place this service uh, together with business experts that will also help um, to see the other part of it. Uh, so this uh, service is intended to support uh, some 25 individual projects. We have already uh, delivered service, uh, I, I think, you know, some, to some six or so. Uh, so there is there are still place, you know, for more to be supported. And the idea is, in general, um, as the slide says here, uh, that we uh, support the investment readiness of these projects that have been created. So I, as I said, you know, when it comes to the target beneficiaries we are having in mind, so these are the partnerships other the uh, industrial platform. Uh, so as you know, Vanguard Initiative is also one of them. Uh, so we were happy to have the chance uh, to support uh, uh, the one of SMBOLNG as well. Uh, but as I said, there are many other uh, over there. So whoever gets uh, to the maturity level uh, that is uh, is uh, is uh, having a project that is already you know having a business model um, uh, around that, uh, then you know we can and the industry involvement is present. Uh, then uh, you know those are the type of projects and the teams that uh, the TAF is targeting. Um, this is not an easy task. Uh, we have been, you know, seeing so far, uh, and this is also the reason why we don't have that many projects that we were able to provide support, uh, is because uh, they didn't have all these components, you know, listed here present. Uh, meaning that we saw that there is a challenge uh, to the partnerships uh, to be able to involve the industry. Uh, and also, it's not only industry, of course, uh, it's, uh, you need to have all the right stakeholders on board uh, so that you, can, that you can secure at the end also the implementation of the idea that you have in mind. So apart from the industry, it's important to have academia, research institutions, and all these other stakeholders that are relevant you know, for, for this investment idea to be implemented. So uh, as I was saying, it's not so uh, easy to apply for this service in a sense that uh, you have to be ready. You have to be ready and thinking uh, that the investment project you have in mind, uh, it is revenue generating as also this question was asked to Matteo about, you know, the, uh, you know, if, if there's going to be, you know, any, and if, you know, in terms of, you know, sustainability, et cetera, but uh, uh, is there also, you know, this, you know, been, you know, well thought in terms of the financials. Uh, then also the, the investment projects uh, that uh, we are looking at, that they, they should have uh, uh, the public and you know if possible confinance component also thought because uh, these projects uh, of course the commission you know is gonna put uh, and is putting all of certain financial instruments you know to foster this type of investments uh, but also it is uh, always important to have in mind the co-financing component since we are talking about the regions that are mobilized around uh, these uh, projects it's also important then, you know, to have the support of them, of the regional authorities, and then also see, you know, if structural, if structural funding or other type of funding can be also uh, put uh, or secured at least to a certain extent, then, you know, for these, you know, projects, you know, to get financed together with, you know, other type of blended finance that could come into place, like the one coming from EIB or some other sources. As I said, uh, this service is uh, targeting investment projects. So we are not looking here at the typical Horizon 2020 project. Of course, you know, this can be, you know, an add-on on that, but uh, the projects we are having in mind are really those as you would, you know, pitch to the investor, you know, meaning they need to have the business component and the clear investment proposition. And moreover, 
this is you know what it, what it is important we want you know to see that you know together working with you we will be able to finalize uh, the business plan that you are having in mind so that we can see that you know this uh, uh, this project is also going to have the commercial uh, component and it's going to uh, be uh, placed in the market so when we we are talking about the investment proposition, you know, compared to, as I was saying, European funded project is, you know, you have, you know, when applying, you know, for the service, you, you need to think as you are going to the bank, or as I was saying, if you are going to pitch a project in front of the investor, meaning that you need to have all the right elements, you know, of it. So that, you know, once, you know, we'll be looking at it, you know, we will say, okay, so yeah, you know, we see that uh, this, uh, this project is bankable. Um, and that, you know, there are grounds, you know, for it that we can work with you together, you know, to help you to shape it until, you know, you will really have a good uh, business plan in mind so that you can, you know, go to uh, ask for funding, if not already uh, pre-secured. So what does it entail, you know, to apply for this service? Uh, so as we said, you know, this, this is the technical assistance of the European Commission, meaning that for you, you know, this is free of charge but you have to apply for it. And uh, there is a, a dedicated uh, web page and a link to it. Uh, and really the best is really to first uh, to have a look uh, and uh, to have a look at the application and see what elements does it entail? Because first of all, you have to ful fulfill the admiss admissibility criteria. And as I said, we are targeting the partnerships under Esther platform for, in for industrial modernization so you know this is the first one uh, that you that you need to satisfy uh, then you know you have to go you know through it and uh, you need to uh, be able to specify your project uh, and do it in a very clear way because this is also something that we've been uh, seeing you know from applying and applications uh, that we have been evaluating so far that it was also a bit of struggle you know to our regions and to the partnerships to clearly describe you know their investment idea uh, then what it's also per prerequisite you know for applying uh, if you have an idea in mind uh, and you have you know the main actors uh, mobilized around it then it will be good that you have you know letters of support or memorandums of understanding as our colleagues from uh, the SMB LNG had uh, so that you know we can see that you have committed you know human resources uh, that will be uh, working you know with our tough experts uh, to to be able actually to do the activities and and the job envisioned. Uh, so this is not uh, this needs to be taken seriously because we need uh, to see that you know commitment is here because otherwise you know it's very hard uh, to achieve the objective. Uh, so, but it's, as I said, the application form, it's available online. You can see it via, via this link uh, and all the elements and the guidelines, you know, are very uh, clearly described. So you will get a better picture by looking at it, what does it entail? But of course, we can always be contacted to provide you with more information and we'll be more than happy to. So uh, when just quickly, uh, if you would be uh, applying for, for this service, uh, what uh, it needs to be clearly described so that we can also, you know, that you can be assessed uh, positively is that, as I said, you know, you need to be clear about the products and services uh, that you are targeting, you know, with your investment proposal. Also for your client and customers, at least, you know, to the uh, next, to the first possible extent. Uh, then also, as I was mentioning, it's important uh, to have uh, right actors you know mobilize because the team and also it would be good that you know those that you are targeting in a way validated your idea which means that you know even before applying you had to you know had kind of a market you know test approach you know seeing if those uh, that you are targeting say well yeah this is the service you know that we need to have in the market as Matteo was also explaining uh, moreover as also said you need to have a business model behind it uh, and also have you know at least you know uh, an idea what the revenue streams and the cash flow is going to be because otherwise we are not talking about the investment proposal 
Uh, and also what it's important to, uh, um, to note here is that these projects that we are looking at, you know, how to have the internal, international dimension. So it is okay, you know, if, uh, you know, two regions, for example, from Italy, you know, are those, you know, that are, uh, that are the ones, you know, that are driving, you know, this idea, but also it would be, it would be good to showcase that, you know, this model could be re replicated in other regions uh, and that there is already, you know, uh, an idea about it because, you know, that this is what, uh, what uh, this service is targeting. And uh, also what it's important, you know, to note that we need to see clearly, you know, the leadership uh, behind it, you know, so who is going to be driving this investment idea forward, and especially in terms of the implementation, because as said, uh, you know, it takes time, you know, to work and, you know, to finalize uh, uh, the objective and, you know, the business plan, as our colleagues, Matteo, Maurizio, Elaria, and Martina and others know, because it really took time to, to work with our experts uh, and to do the exchange in order to be able to finalize the business plan. So the right expertise and profiles need to be in place as well as they do need to have resources and time you know, for these activities uh, to, to, uh, to be uh, undertaken. And also, as already mentioned before, private sector engagement is really crucial here. Uh, because it's 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 hard you know to to get you know to uh, to the fact to the point of implementation if industry is not involved, um, and also then you know this also is uh, adding you know the commercial value to the project, as well as I said the institutional backing is also very very important because this you know leads to securing you know funding and financing as well as implementation and replication. So it's very good to have all these actors uh, already mobilized, you know, around your idea before you applying. Uh, so, you know, just to, to just to give you a few more words of then, you know, in summary, you know, what does it entail? So as our colleagues were saying, you know, this is a valuable service because it, it really gives a perspective to the projects and the opportunity to work, you know, with the business experts of different expertise uh, that can really help shape up your projects. Because very often, you know, there are very good ideas, but sometimes this other angle is very important, you know, so that you can really, uh, you have a business, a good business plan in hand. Uh, but then, as I said, you know, to apply, you know, just, you know, do, you know, your homework. Uh, you know, look at the application and the elements that need to be specified over there uh, and make sure that you are eligible, you know, when applying. Make sure also that you have mature investment ideas so that, you know, all this that we were saying about the customers, uh, uh, the market, et cetera, that you did your homework to a certain extent and that you can clearly describe what do you want to achieve with this investment proposal because then it's also going to be much easier uh, to, uh, to put a good application uh, together. Uh, it takes time to prepare. Uh, so we would say that, you know, good month of, you know, work and preparation would need to, uh, to be in place in order for you to, uh, to apply. Uh, it is not that if you are rejected, you, you cannot reapply. Uh, this is not the case, but then again, it takes time to improve the application, etc. And this service is not going to be in place very much longer. So uh, I would then, you know, encourage that it's better to do good, good preparation uh, than, than to waste time uh, and applying more, more times, even though, as I said, there is no problem with that as well. Um, there is also, you know, this issue, as we were saying, that to, it's, it's good to, uh, to showcase this institutional backing as well as the one of the private sector. So, you know, try, you know, to get, you know, their commitments um, in showcases to us because, as I said, then this also means that uh, there is, your idea is mature enough, you have the right, you know, team expertise and support in place, and then this will, you know, this will definitely uh, be uh, much easier uh, and much better evaluated, and this will also show us a signal uh, that you are ready uh, to, to work with us. Uh, and as I said, you know, just have in mind uh, that to apply for this kind of a service, uh, it, it is again about the investment proposals with international dimension. 
So this means that uh, we are not looking at European you know, type of research projects or we do, but they need to be at a higher tier layer level so that we can really uh, help you in shaping up the business model and hopefully also guide you to the way of you know, securing funding and help you to commercialize your project. So uh, you are free to contact me if you have any questions. Uh, we also do kind of a pre-check of, uh, of uh, the investment ideas, you know, to, to give the first feedback if uh, this uh, idea is mature enough. So to help, you know, to guide and support uh, so that uh, the, whoever wants to apply, uh, they're more successful in that. Uh, and as I said, uh, it's uh, the service, it's still in place. Uh, we are having uh, more of cutoff dates uh, uh, for the applications set uh, for this year. So there will be one in October and most probably one in November, and then there will be new ones coming as of next year. So please, you know, visit the website and, you know, have a look and, you know, contact us if you will have any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anita. Thank you very much for the comprehensive uh, presentation. Uh, I'm glad that you have been um, so clear in my opinion, because, uh, the, the key points you raised have been, in fact, the, the, the key points for us while uh, going through the uh, pr process of uh, the application. So I just would like to stress that uh, being ready for it, it is very important and the preparation phase, in my opinion, is the one that takes uh, the most time. I see there is a question if it is for... Uh, uh, no, it is not directly for um, for Anita. And um, yes, there is. Uh, there is a general question. I will I will uh, read it as I speak. Uh, um, by Richard Harding. Mm -hmm. uh, possibly a more open general question. In addition to the TAF, would it be possible to go into more about other linkages? between the fascinating cases presented and the smart specialization strategy processes. Can it be said, for example, that different elements of the SMB Bio LNG initiative result from enhanced entrepreneurial discovery processes, EDP, or improved S3 governance, cross-sectorial multilevel, connected with S3 in the partner region? Any specific examples of this? Well, um, for me, this is a little bit of a complicated answer. I don't know if, Anita, if you have it in front of you and you feel like uh, I it. replying it now or maybe uh, privately to the, um, to the person that has, uh, that has asked this question if you need more time to, to understand it and reflect. Please feel free, feel free to decide you now. Okay, so well, definitely. I mean, all uh, as as I said, all these S three partnerships uh, that we are supporting. Of course, the thematic areas that have been chosen are very much related uh, to their smart specialization strategies. That that, that is one, you know, of of uh, you know the goals uh, that the platform is targeting. And of course, yeah, I would say that this is very much related uh, to the ADP, of course. And you know, this this is what it's uh, uh, what is the value of regions working together, uh, because you know we've been seeing uh, uh, let's say evolution, you know, by by partnerships working together exactly in developing, you know, and strengthening the new value chains, um, and you know, really having a very good exchange in terms. You know of you know the ideas and what can be achieved together. Um, so is we are discussing you know already with the commission you know if there is um, if there is maybe you know it could be something can be done more in that regard you know to to support these processes. This is also kind of a let's say learning by doing experience uh, you know a little bit. Um, and I believe that uh, because there are more services that are in place, uh, you know, to, um, in terms of, in, in addition to TF, there is a reconfirmed service that is actually supporting the partnerships in this also ADP process, I would say. 
Um, and we are trying, you know, to support the regions, you know, in uh, actually building this, you know, cross sectorial, uh, you know, value chains and, you know, uh, you know, developing in, in a way, you know, also the expertise that maybe it's, it's, it's not, you know, uh, in, in uh, you know, in their um, with them, you know, per se, because, uh, you know, it depends, you know, of, of, you know, of the expertise that, you know, the, the partnerships and the teams have, you know, there is always something in addition that it was needed, especially now that we've been working with them, you know, in developing these investment projects. Uh, so, as I said, you know, it's still kind of a learning experience. And I think that once, you know, we will be able you know, to evaluate also, you know, on, on, on the base of, of success, you know, hopefully that we'll be achieving through this, what then maybe should also, you know, uh, you know, what is missing and should still be in place, you know, for these linkages, you know, to be more strengthened, you know, and, you know, and developed, you know, in the future and to see what, you know, other results could be achieved. Thanks, Anita, for the answer. So I think that if there are, there are no more questions, uh, I think I, we can close today the, the meeting of the day. I would like, first of all, to thank the speakers for their time and the interesting contributions. And of course, from the Green Chemistry Lab for the excellent organization, all the work done for the bioeconomy pilot. And then of course, all the attendees for their interest, for the questions and for just being here. Uh, so thanks uh, everybody. If, uh, let me see, there are, okay. Uh, you know, there are questions, but uh, they can be replied by uh, uh, privately. So uh, thank you again and uh, See you uh, soon uh, for some nice work together. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. you. As always. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.